This video covers our free Web API service offering, together with the additional DevExpress.NET MAUI free offer. This will help us build a secure mobile app from scratch in minutes. We'll authenticate different users created in the previous video, consume data and authorize CRUD operations based on predefined user roles and permissions. Data access is powered by the free DevExpress Web API service and Microsoft Entity Framework Core. You heard that right. Our .NET MAUI components, role-based access control, and basic CRUD features of our Web API service demoed here are totally free for everybody. Advanced enterprise functions and technical support for this .NET app security and Web API ship as part of the DevExpress Universal subscription. Okay. Let's switch to Visual Studio where I have the solution from our previous videos opened. The selected project contains a web API service to be consumed from the MAUI app we build today. The rest are the authorization management, user interface for Windows and Blazor, and our business objects. To create the initial malware application, we'll use another DevExpress free offer. So we'll head to the website. Then go to Products and click .NET MAUI Free Download, Install, and Reopen Visual Studio. This offer includes several components, but for this demo, we'll use the Collection View, the Editors and Form, and Tabs and Project Templates. Now back to our visual solution, and let's add a new MAUI project using the Project Templates. Name it DX Maui Free Web API Security and click Create. Go with the tab layout, remove the components we're not using, and target only the Android platform. Now let's explore what the template generated for us. There is an MVVM pattern bound to the item model a collection of pages containing the markup for all the controls we chose previously in the template wizard. And there's also a login page generated for us, which is really cool. And we can use it along with the item pages to demo data consumption and authentication from our web API. Now let's see the view items folder. I'm interested in the items view model, which I'm going to use. In the constructor, I see familiar MVVM patterns such as an observable collection that will populate my items. There's also additional commands to take care of behaviors such as item tapping, loading, and adding as well. Everything looks great. However, I am interested in what's in the base view model, so let's move there. Common patterns such as I notify property changed, a data store, and a navigation service exists here ready to be used which is also great because I don't have to code them myself. I guess what's left is to see how this important iData store interface is declared. It looks simple enough. A set of methods will help me add, update, delete, and get my items. The iData store interface is generated in the services folder where I see the mock data store implementation of it. What this class does is it populates an items list with predefined values and uses that list to implement logic for the iDataStore methods. My job then is to create another iDataStore implementation that will use the Web API endpoints instead. But first, let's run the application as is and explore the UI created from the template. So here it is. Our app started and defaulted to the About page containing markup to display info about the app and a button to redirect us to the DevExpress documentation. On the bottom, we see the Browse tab, and we can use it to navigate to our Items page. Here, we can see all items from the Mock Data Store and can navigate to their detailed view page. It's also possible to add a new item. Notice though that there is no route to the login page. So let's do that next. Make the login page our first page when we start the application. 
For this, we navigate to our app SAML and uncomment the navigation suggestion generated from the template. In addition, since we went after login to navigate to the items page, we need to register a rope for it. Finally, we move to the login view model, change the navigation call to the items page, and remove the password validation since our web API users do not have one. However, it is wise at this point to do some refactoring. We'll rename our item model to post to match the post business object from our web API, aiming to minimize serialization or deserialization efforts. Now, guided from the detailed DevExpress documentation, we're ready for the iDataStore implementation that will consume data from our web API. So we declare a web API service class that implements the iDataStore interface. To make web requests, we'll use the HTTP client but static and read only so to avoid socket exhaustion. Now let's add some constants. The web API URL, which for development uses a special loopback IP as noted in the Android documentation. The absolute URL of all post endpoints and the application JSON string. When developing, the emulator local machine communication is done through the special IP we use in the API URL. So we need to code a handler to validate the certificate and verify the host name. Similar handler samples can be found online. Now let's code the getItemsAsync method. I'll use the HTTP client to issue a get request to the post endpoint, and I will deserialize the result. Next is the getItemAsync method, which is almost the same with the addition of an OData filter parameter according to DevExpress documentation. So I'll refactor the one I just coded and reuse it. Following is the add item async, where this time I'll send the post object parameter to the web API endpoint. In the case of an error, for example, a user that can't create posts, I'll display an alert. Finally, I'll add an authenticate method with a username and password parameters. I'll send them with a post request to the authenticate endpoint, following to the letter the DevExpress documentation I visited earlier. Then I'll retrieve the token and store it in my HTTP client so it can be used from the other methods I just implemented. The authenticate method is not part of the iDataStore interface, so the project template doesn't use it. I have to code the call myself. So I moved to the login view model, and in the on login clicked method, I grabbed the data store, cast it to my web API service, and authenticate. Last, we replace the default mock data store service registration with our web API service. Now I'm ready to test the integration of the secured web API service I built in the previous video and the Malawi application I'm currently coding. So first I'll start the web API service and then the Maui application. I'll log in as an editor that has full permissions for the post business object type. And voila, here's the post record I created in the previous video, and I can see both the title and the content. Next, I'll attempt to create a new post, and I don't expect any issues since this user has full permissions. So let's click the add button and type a title and a description. Final test is with the title viewer user, which can read only the post titles, however, cannot create them. As expected per user permissions, I can see both record titles, but not their contents. I see the add button navigates to the detail view, allowing me to believe that I can create a new post. I can expose a custom endpoint to get if the authenticated user has created permissions and use it to control the add button navigation. But this is a topic for another video. 
For now, I'll fill the title and the content fields and we'll try to save this post expecting the alert I coded previously in the add items async method. Great, my web API responded to alert me that this operation is prohibited by security rules. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified anytime we release new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.